Once was a land of woe and strife Where the people were bereft of hope They prayed to their gods of might and light To deliver the heroes of old Instead they got heroes Did you hear the quotes in my voice of moral ambiguity? They may help or may not help you at all Depends on what's in it for them They kick and they punch and they maul and they smash They lie and they scheme and they burn and they slash Succeed or fail, it adds to the tale Dungeons and debacles starts now Hello and welcome to this episode of the Dungeons and Debacles podcast I'm your host and Dungeon Master, Kevin Going around the table, Shane I'm Shane playing Alexander the Human Bard and Hannah. I'm Hannah, and I'll be playing Talia, the human rogue. And John. What up, y'all? I'm playing Land of Dice, and I have a nut. Wow, that really did stick in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and Blake. I'm Blake, and I'll be playing Juliet, the Dragonborn Eldritch Knight slash wizard. So, the last time on Dungeons & Debacles podcast, you guys found yourselves in the town of Lullen. There... You were given a task to uh, compete in the Egg Bowl to defeat the reigning champions of the region, the Lullen Lions, in a contest of skill and prowess. You were able to uh, zilch them off the board and score twice without them even scoring once to the great dismay of Tom Crady. At this point, the stands are clearing out. Uh, you've been approached by Bellin, who told you a good job and looks forward to seeing you in the town later tonight for the celebration. So that's where you find yourselves now, out in this uh, hand egg field, as the stands begin to clear out. Well played. Um, I think we did pretty well. We gave him a shit down. So who exactly do we talk to to um, get this all figured out? I, I think we start with Bellin, and he'll take us back to the chief, and he'll give us our, our trophy, our certificate, I don't know. So at this point, uh, you've seen uh, Bellin came up and talked to you after the game, and uh, you're seeing him walk away. I Let's think he's running. You ball. better go catch him. Well, we had just chatted with him, so uh, I think it would be weird to chase after him and say, Hey, we need to leave right now. We don't know. Maybe he can help us with something. Give us a map or who knows. Yeah, I mean, it's nighttime now. We're not going to be leaving right now, are we? I don't think maps decay. <laughs> I'm saying it's not urgent. Let's just go hang out with folks and try not to draw too much more attention than we have to. Okay, fair enough. Um, where do you suggest we start? Does this place have a, an inn or some kind of, you know, communal housing? He said something about a bar, I think. Drinking. There's an inn of some kind. Well, then we should go to the bar. Yep. You're seeing these uh, people uh, clear out. They all seem to be heading towards the uh, the center of town here, as uh, celebration looks like uh, it started. So uh, you headed into uh, town, or you following the crowd, or what are you going to do? You going to go looking for uh, Colin Fairshot? He was the uh, leader of the town. Yes, that is exactly what we're going to do. We're going to look for Colin. Okay. Where where would we even start looking? Does, is there like a big house or something like that? Or can we There was that it? log house or thing we were in before. Then I guess we will head over there. Okay, so uh, you start making your uh, way back to that uh, large uh, log cabin um, structure that uh, you originally saw him in. You make your way through town, and it seems most people are gathering at this uh, two-story house in the center of town. And then uh, you make your way to the log cabin. Are you going inside? Yes. Okay, so uh, you knock on the door, and uh, there's no answer. I guess nobody's home. I guess our only option is to go to the bar. 
All right, so that's not hard to find considering most uh, people have started gathering. What you now realize is the uh, tavern in the town. The sign out front is a, uh, a large cabbage with a uh, wolf's mouth. The sign says, and uh, Alinidas would know this because he speaks Elven, but it says the Howling Cabbage. The Howling Cabbage. I don't know what that would be a reference to. Isn't there some kind of myth about some, you know, wolf that tried to eat a cabbage because they couldn't get across the river or something? I don't know. So you see a lot of people outside of this place, and the streets outside are packed, and a lot of them appear to be deep in their cups at this point from pre-gaming and drinking at the game. You're seeing um, some elven children out in the streets running around and uh, tossing a uh, stone egg back and forth that's much smaller than the uh, official one that you used on the field. There's men and women out on the street. Um, give me an investigation check. 20. Also 20. 16. So I guess I'm not as investigated. So Juliet and Talia, you are going to see what appears to be Colin, the leader of this village, uh, walking into the bar. Hey, uh, there's Colin. Maybe we should go talk to him. You should go talk to him. Uh, you seem to be, you know, the one that he will respond best to. Hey, what, what, what do you all want me to ask him? Well, do we have his blessing to go? I mean, is, it, is he serious about it? Is there any way he can help us make our way to Fade In? Well, all right, I'll ask him for help, advice, and things of that nature. So, Luna walks over to Cohen. Okay, um, it's going to take you a, a little bit to get to him because you have to walk through these crowds and you're like kind of it's kind of like a concert atmosphere where you're out the lawn and you're like trying to move through people to get to the beer stand are you taking anyone with you or is it just you is anybody tagging along julia oh there we go (laughs) yes i am all right it's going to take you mm, the better part of 10 minutes or so to work your way through this crowd and up to the steps and once you get inside this place is uh, jumping. It's very rowdy people are singing songs and uh, even though the lions lost you hear people chanting lions and some people singing their fight song inside this place kind of looks like a fantasy Applebee's. There is memorabilia all over the walls from plows to yokes to saw blades from the timber mill here. There are some weapons up on the wall from long swords and great swords. There is also a bunch of lion's memorabilia all over the walls because there are no other local teams from high schools or such. Um, you are seeing various portraits of what appears to be current and former lions. And there is a big portrait of Tom Crady over the bar. The floors here kind of stick to your feet as you walk through. Um, There are some sawdust on the floor, but it is sparse and it is really hard to move through here because people are jam-packed in here. There's a bunch of conversations going on. You get bumped multiple times as you walk through this crowd and you kind of get some looks from people, but nothing outright hostile. You are recognized um, by some and they give you some dirty looks. Give me another investigation check uh, between the whoever's in the room here. Yeah. 20. Natural 20, 22. All right, so Talia and Julia, um, you look around the room and you're looking, looking, looking over heads and you've uh, got 
a slight event advantage, Juliet, just for the fact that you're taller than most people here, even though the elves are pretty tall. You look around and you see Colin, and he appears to be at a table over in a corner of the tavern here, and he is sitting down. Uh, Lunados, there's Colin. Let's head over there and say hi. All right. I will look where she's pointing and notice him, and then start walking. All right, so you fight your way through the crowd. You make it over to the table, and... Colin is sitting there with four other wood elves drinking and laughing. Apparently, they're in the middle of the story. I will stand there awkwardly. Okay, you stand there awkwardly. I'm still standing there awkwardly. Uh, Talia's going to say, hey, uh, Colin. Their conversation stops, and uh, he looks over, and he says, Oh, if it's not there, hold on, let me get I gotta get back to the voice, hold on. <laughs> huh. If it ain't the traveling daggers. Come on over here and have a drink. You know who walks over and sits down at the table. If there's room. Uh there's one chair, Juliet and uh, Talia you'd have to stand. And That's uh, fine. I was gonna say my apologies, uh didn't know he's gonna be having you as guest and ain't got enough cups, but you're welcome to take Swig here off his bottle. He takes a, a large glass bottle of wine and pushes it across the table toward you. Luna dies, steals up, takes a Swig. Uh, it's much the same wine as you had before the game. Um, it's pretty strong, but uh, Sip's not gonna kill you. I didn't say Sip, I said Swig. Okay, Swig. That's not gonna kill you either. <laughs> And uh, Colin says, uh, gotta say, I didn't have uh, much hope that uh, y'all be able to pull it off. Uh, we're all quite surprised. Uh, I mean, it, it shocked the town. I mean, nobody beats the Lions. But I tell you what, that's some of the, the fanciest footwork I ever seen there. Luno, Luno was right. Yep. Well, we've been on the road for a long time now, I'm dealing with I mean, no offense to y'all's lines, but we've been dealing with some really nasty sorts out there in the road. It is awful outside of the elven places. You know, they, they, they are not kind of folk. Oh, yeah? Like what? Where, where you been? Oh, down south. They're facing all sorts of trouble. You know, down in, in Asheville and, and down there, like, uh, in Kala. You know, they're just... Yeah, they, they, they got nasty sorts running around all sorts of places. Well, what's what's hey. going on down in Collin? We don't get much okay. news uh, up this far north. Well, we were hanging out in the woods north of Collin, and there was this necromancer doing all sorts of nasty things. Necromancer, you say? Yep, she had zombies go to low. Well, I guess that's where that running uh, came in handy. Oh, yeah. I mean, you don't have to run too fast to get away from a zombie, but still. Yeah. I think I about shit my pants, I saw Necromancer. Well, that wouldn't much help. Zombies don't have a sense of smell. And uh, at that, the people in the group around this table, there's an uproar of laughter. They all start slapping the table. Lunadas looks rather confused for a minute and decides to let it slap. Lunadas got jokes. <laughs> he does? And Talia's going to just kind of, like, I was unaware that that was a possibility, but not, like, actually say that, just to just look at him in, in, you know, that tone of voice. <laughs> so what now? What y'all going to be doing? I'm assuming y'all spending the night, at least before you set out 12 tomorrow. Yep, yep, we're uh, going to spend the night, and then tomorrow, first thing, we'll get up, head on toward that gate. Speaking of which, uh, how, how would we manage that? You know? So you looking for directions? Well, we know which way to go. We're just worried about uh, making sure we don't have any more run-ins with the, the elven folks, the wood elves, the wood elves. At least. Well, I'm a man of my word. I'll write you up a, a writ tomorrow morning, saying you got my blessing to pass up through here. But you gotta understand, there's uh, we're, we're just uh, one group of wood elves around here. And there are many factions and many tribes that be running around. And I'm not going to say that my word doesn't carry any weight, 
but I can't say exactly that they would listen to me or a piece of paper I'd written. Well, it's better than nothing. I think you can. Yeah, it's something. But I tell you what, it probably ain't going to help you at all and probably hurt you you get stuck by some high elves. Well, if there's too many high elves, I'd be more than happy to uh, give them a pummel. So, I'm, I'm not too concerned about that. Well, it's your life. And their death. Or yeah. at least my discomfort. <laughs> and at that, the elves at the table here start laughing again. They say, you, you sure is funny, mister. I thank you. You stop me if I'm getting too much into your uh, personal business, but uh, how long you been together here with, uh, what did you call her, your uh, fiancé? Fiancé, yep. Uh, we, we've been together about a year now. You know, official-like. No offense, uh, but uh, how does a, uh, an, an, an elf and a, uh, and a dragonborn here uh, become, let's say, in the friendly way? No offense, man. He looks over at uh, you, uh, Juliet, and he's going to tip his hat. Well, we adopt this here youngin, poor Stalia. And, you know, things just sort of proceeded. We've been traveling together before that, but, you know, we got more to family, as they say. Oh, really? Congratulations. Sure is uh, one of the most diverse families i ever seen, at least up here. Help them is what you make it. Yeah, we're, we're wood elves. We're a lot more progressive than, uh, let's say, a lot of the other elves. You know, who you love is uh, up to you. You find your tree, Flono. Damn skip. Man, they're so supportive. What good people. <laughs> uh, so while this is happening, Tali is going to attempt to be getting a hold of the bottle so that she can take a sip as well. <laughs> Uh, okay, I don't think anybody would be stopping you. Except for maybe Juliet. <laughs> That's why I say attempt. Okay, yeah, Juliet will yeah, well, give you a disapproving glare, but I don't think Juliet's going to stop you. Are you <laughs> trying to sneak it? Uh, not necessarily sneak it, but just, you know, take a sip and, and you know, continue the bottle passing. Well, you know, like 90% of it, it's like walking in like you own the fucking place, so... <laughs> So yeah, I mean, nobody's going to stop you from taking a bottle and taking a sip. <laughs> it's, it's somewhere between a swig and a sip, I assume. Yep. So she'll do that and then ask, uh, so where where is it that we can sleep tonight? Just camp out or is there an inn? Uh, there's probably a room for rent uh, here or, uh, you know, you're welcome to camp out here on the outskirts of the village. I'm assuming you got camping gear because it seems like y'all are travelers. Yeah, we got gear for days. Literally. Y'all got that uh that brand new Halbert Pro uh old skin tents they got up? We had a cart, a horse, lots of horses. And dog. Uh, actually come to think of it, would you happen to have any of that sort of camping equipment for sale? Oh yeah, we got person here in town makes it. Because I would love to have my own little tent uh, with Luno here, of course. She she loves her comforts. Oh yeah, he uh, makes all manner tent. He got singles, doubles. I think he's got some even big enough for six people. Well, uh, we we're, we're not that old. Yeah, he's got that canvas. He gets uh oiled up nice and good with the oil and no water coming through. That sounds delightful. Um. Would you happen to have any advice going up there? I'm just, where it is dangerous and all, but surely you've made that trip before? Do you know what to expect? Well, or do you have any maps? I haven't made that uh, trip in a real long time. I mean, I could draw you out uh, a map here on this napkin. It'd be crude, but it'd probably be enough. Uh, but the only advice I'd give to you is, uh, you know, be careful on the road because it's being watched. Careful out in the woods because it's been watched too. Just everybody real jumpy right now between uh, the high elves and, and us, of course. Uh, and there's even been talk of a civil war getting started. Do you know what initially caused it? You know, I really don't. All I know is at 
some point within here in uh, the past two or three months, the uh, high elves decided they were going to go to the Fay Gate and stop people from going in. And then after that point, ain't nobody could go in there and uh, do their adulthood ritual. Bastards. Now, why they shut off access, I couldn't tell. I'm told um, from some people went up there scouting a few months ago from here in town. They got the, the whole thing uh, barred off. They got these uh, wooden palisades up everywhere. They got a garrison of uh, high elves stationed up here, and they're watching the woods. So I don't even think you could probably even get close to it now, which is bad news for you, you know. I mean, all I could do is maybe give you this letter and maybe you won't be molested by the rest of the wood elves out there, but I don't see any way you get in that fake game. Well, if you can't sneak, we can fight. If you can't fight, we can buy. If you can't buy, we can sneak. Much sneak. Well, good luck to you is all I can say. Thank you. Sounds like we might need it. Yep, sounds like it's getting hot up here from the... The last rumors I heard here within uh, probably like the past two weeks, there was some people was traveling uh, from Woodbine down here, and uh, they got stopped by some high elves out on the road, and they didn't even ask any questions. They just start shooting. I do hate them high elves. Yeah, they real jumpy about something now. Couldn't tell you what that be. Authoritarian bastards. Who knows? Could be anything. Yeah, that's about the only news we get up this way. But uh, I also heard them uh, people up in uh, Fayview and called. They about had it. I've uh, heard they've been putting together some squads go take Faygate back. And if that happens, all hell's going to break loose out on this continent. Well, if it shuts them high old bastards down, I'm in favor of it. Yeah, I'd be in favor of it too, but I don't want to see any of those get killed, whether they're high elves or what it is. I mean... It's just bad, man. Every time a war happens, food gets scarce, gold gets scarce, people get killed. I hope you leave this off in silence. That's deliberate on my part. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you know of any way that we could potentially convince uh, the fellow wolf elves? Wolf elves, what? <laughs> Wood elves. Wolf elves, so they ain't got no lycanthropy up in here that I know of, girl. Uh, I apologize, the drink has gotten to me. Um, that would be so awesome, you know, wolf elves. <laughs> uh, but, you know, anything we can say to, to, to let them let us pass so we can pass through peace? I mean, maybe you could tell them the story uh, you told me, and maybe this letter would help, but, you know, I can't think anybody do anything. Hell, I have a hard time getting people around here to pay taxes. And you hear some money in the bar yell, Taxation theft! <laughs> and he says, see? Talia's gonna uh, basically just say, I'm gonna see if we can get us some rooms because I feel like I need to lay down. And then walk towards the bar keep, I guess? <laughs> Question mark? Okay. You walk away and then are you guys hanging out or are you gonna go with uh, Talia? I'll go. Yeah, we're going to go with Talia. Okay. As uh, you start to leave, uh, Colin's going to stand up, and he's going to walk over to the at us, and he's going to lean in real close to you and say, uh, I don't I don't think there's going to be any trouble tonight. But there's a lot of people in town right now. I'm not happy that you beat the lines. So uh, just watch your back, okay? I don't want to have to lock anybody up on Egg Bowl night. Will do. Thank you kindly it is for the I'll see you tomorrow morning, okay? All right. Stay safe now. I'll try. All right. You hang up. <laughs> no, you hang up. Okay. Click. All right, so... Uh, you didn't hang up either. <laughs> for, uh, for those listeners who don't understand the reference of hanging up, we used to have these things called uh, landlines. <laughs> <laughs> where it was a phone attached to a cord that was attached to the wall and you would hang the phone up to end the call. What do they call it now? You in call? Hell if I know, I grew up with landlines. <laughs> you in call. You in call. You stop texting. No, you stop texting. Imagine they just hang up. 
Why are you ghosting? <laughs> All right, so uh, you make it to the bar, and it is really busy. They've got four uh, bartenders working currently. And there is elves all the way up and down this uh, bar. That's probably 20 feet wide. Bartenders are you know, shuffling back and forth, grabbing bottles of wine and pouring ale. Tom, are you going to ask for something? Uh, yes. I forgot that I was the one who initiated this. Um, <laughs> uh, I- excuse me. Do you have a? Do you have any rooms to rent? You say this to a tall female elf with brown hair. Who's shuffling back and forth, and she's busy filling some mugs, and she just raises one finger to you, like, hold on just a second. And uh, she's going to pour probably about 20 more drinks before she gets back to you. It says, uh, <laughs> so you want a room in the inn? Uh, as many as you have available. Well, I think we already got uh, one right now. How many people you got staying? Come on, speak up, girl. I ain't got much time. Six? Four. Five. 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 Uh, That's going to be top fit in there, uh, but uh, it's yours if you want it. It's uh, five gold pieces a night. As She'll she's, pass over as she's five gold pouring, pieces. Uh, wine, um, you pass over the gold pieces, and she takes it, and uh, she's going to, without even like looking over, like reach over to underneath the bar and pull out a key and slap it down and take the gold and say, uh, check out time as a uh, ten. Thank you very much. All right. You want anything to drink? Uh, not right now. Okay. And then uh, she moves away from you and starts filling up some drinks. Uh, I'm going to turn to uh, Luno and, and Juliet and say, uh, let's check out our room. Sure. Yep. So you make your way through the crowd and upstairs, and you see the doors don't have numbers on them. They have this Elvis script that you can't read. But you look down at the key, and it appears to have a elvish uh, symbol on it. And you walk down the hall, and you find one that matches. And you put the key inside, and it opens. So you walk inside, and uh, it's pretty sparsely furnished. There's a dresser here with a small mirror. There is a wash basin and a pitcher for water. There's a bedpan and two twin, or like full-size beds. The room itself is probably maybe 10 feet by 10 feet. I'll take the floor. I can meditate anywhere. Nifron's going to walk over and uh, take off his sword and put it on one of the beds and lie down, taking the whole thing. Talia's going to curl up at his feet like a cat. And say, you don't get a bed to yourself. Don't, don't feel special. I'm going to sigh. And say, whatever, go. It's been a long day and I'm going to bed. I'll just put together something on the floor with pillows and such. All right. Looks looks like Juliet and Luno get the. Oh no. Juliet gets a bed to herself? Is that how that works? Sounds I, like it. Yeah, guess so. Sounds good to me. But she farts fire when she sleeps, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! <laughs> All right, so is anybody doing anything else for the night, or are you going to sleep? Pretty sure our wizard's the only one who does stuff at night. That is very well, true. I, normally I would train Abbott, but uh, tonight I think I think sleep. Also, um, did they let Ab- Abbott in? I don't know what did you did you with Abbott. Did you try to bring him in? As far as I know, he's still out in the cart. Before I before I go to sleep, I'm going to try to bring Abbott into the room and see if anybody says anything. Okay. So you go and get Abbott, and it doesn't appear anybody's paying any attention to you at all. They are deep in the cups. Sweet. In the morning, Abbott's sprawled across both Alexander and Luna. <laughs> oh, I was thinking Nifron and Talia. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, So yes, if we have time, uh, Julia is going to scribe a spell into her spell book, or at least attempt to. Okay. Uh, What spell are you doing? She's going to do Locate Object, which is a second level spell. Okay, give me a Arcana check. Sure. Natural one, six. Looks like I... uh... So you get halfway through it, (laughs) uh, your quill breaks, and you're like really concentrating and, and pushing hard on the parchment with this uh, 
quill and it breaks and in the process the nib of it goes flying across the paper uh, taking ink with it and it has ruined the spell Ah, Tiamat's breath blasphemy well Juliet is going to go to sleep with frustration then (laughs) that's it Okay. anybody else want to do anything I am fine I'm good okay uh, Shane, could I have you drop down in the secret channel? I guess it's his eye. They turn down the uh, the lamps in the room and uh, kick off your boots, and you're lying down, going to sleep, and you know your breathing starts to get slow and heavy, and you start feeling that lucid feeling that you get when you're right on the edge of sleep, and you start to get this tunnel vision. You feel like uh, you're going like deeper in the sleep but you're now trying to like fight it but you can't wake up you're going to hear this voice that says I hunger and you've ignored me for far too long you've had ample opportunity to feed me the souls and yet you don't you fight like a coward in battle and will not use me to my full potential you will be punished you cannot escape my will And then that dagger is going to appear in your hand. You look at it, and at this point you can't really tell if you're dreaming or you're awake, but the dagger is in your hand, and you're holding it out in front of you, and it's glowing that blackish-purple hue, and then you feel pain in your fingers that creeps up your arm and into your heart. You try to rouse yourself and, and, like, sit up, but you've got what feels like sleep paralysis. And you think to yourself, am I having a heart attack? And then everything goes dark and you lose consciousness. You go into a dreamless sleep until you wake up until the next morning. Nice. All right, pop back up in general. All right, so uh, everybody wakes up the next morning. And um, I guess uh, you're getting your gear together. Alexander, you are uh, woken by the sounds in the room. And uh, you're actually going to start up to a sitting position because you've, it, it feels like you've lost time from when you were starting to go to sleep. And then uh, you look down at your hands to try to see if the dagger's there. And you see this blackish, purplish scar running across the palm of your hand. And it has like these, these creeping black veins coming out of it that are trying to crawl up your wrist. That's probably normal. Humans do that, right? And uh, you are going to, mechanically, you're going to take a negative two constitution. Oof. Dang. Like my constitution score? Yep. Your constitution score has been um, lowered by two. Uh, that would affect his hit points or no? Yes. Oof. You just lost six hit um, is everyone waking up at this point, or is this just him waking from his dream, freaking out? Um, every, everybody at this point, you are awake and trying to gather your stuff, and Alexander has still been sleeping on the floor until everybody sees him uh, jerk up. So we would see him looking at his, his hands and would be able to not have to roll to see if we notice it. Um, I mean, you would like see him jerk up out of the corner of, the, of your eye, but you wouldn't be able to give me a perception check. Um, I mean, you see him jerk up, but I mean, you wouldn't necessarily say, "Oh, well, he's looking at his hands." I believe that Alunidas took a uh, did a perception yes. check as well. Nineteen. Um, Don't know if, uh, so, from the the corner of the room, you see him um, jerk up, and through your monk like reflexes, um, you turn your head um, due to the movement and see him looking at his hands. Everything okay over there, Alex? Um, not particularly. Could be better. You have one of your uh, night terrors again? Um, I once I would say more than a terror, less than a nightmare. Um, okay. Yeah, the demon, the whole demon thing is not uh not doing great. Maybe we should do something about that sometime. Talia's going to say over her shoulder, You know, Alunodas, nobody can hear you. You can drop the accent. Uh, 
Maybe I don't want to. Or maybe I'm being careful. I don't. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Knife Run's going to uh, walk over to Alexander and say, uh, Oh, you yourself. Yeah, me. He just, uh, he took a bit of me because I wasn't paying him. When's the last time it fed? Um, a long bit ago. I'm surprised it hasn't taken a toll sooner. How do you feel? Like ass. Just in general? I will lift up my right arm. He looks at it and hisses. That can't be good. You're telling me. Well, I guess we need to get that thing fed. Or you need to get rid of it. You know how we can do that? I don't. And then maybe let's go ahead and feed it on the way out of town and work on getting rid of it later. I think a random mutter in town of an elf would be drawing attention to us. So, shall we leave? Yep. I mean, we're probably going to encounter a good amount of high elves and wood elves on the way to where we're going. We can probably feed it on them. You know, maybe we should uh, consider not feeding a, a demon. I'm just putting that out there. Feed it as little as we can get away with, I think. The point's just to keep Alexander whole until we can get rid of it. Yes, but we don't know how long that'll take because I don't know what it would take to get rid of it. The old priestess back there in Hollis Point, she's one of the most powerful that I've seen in quite a bit. And she said it was beyond her power. Maybe we can call on... What's her name? Lady we talked to you before. Shaw? Yeah, her. Think That's who I was talking about. You're not, you're not speaking of Kayla. And then you remember that is the priestess of Lolf? That is where you first met Nifron in the cave in the volcano after uh, Bonebreaker's tomb. And, uh, Would she be willing and able? He starts laughing. He says, is that a yes? This is so far beneath her. You are worms to her. She probably wouldn't even entertain the thought. Maybe if he had asked for it as a, as a gift. But he received his reward. Hmm. Well, that, that, that... Gotta say, Alex, you're kind of silly. Oh, do we awkward shrug. I guess it couldn't hurt to ask, though. All right, let's go ahead and hit the road. Jack. All right. Never come back. So no. um, you make your way downstairs, and there are some people still passed out on tables. And you see the barkeeps, um, like, trying to wake people up and get them outside. Um, you see them dragging some uh, these wood elves out the door and down the steps and into the streets. Elf woman that you saw earlier says, uh, no breakfast today. We, uh, we've we been busy uh, cleaning up, so uh, you're on your own. Not even a fruit cup? Ain't got no fruit cups. Ain't had no time to make no fruit cups. If you want to help out, though, uh, you can grab a leg as uh, you see her trying to drag this uh, tall wood elf out the door. Yeah, so Luden does will grab a leg and pull to, to no avail, I'm sure. <laughs> Give me a strength check. Well. Uh, between you and this uh, elf lady, you're able to uh, drag this elven man outside and into the street. There are no flexes. Everyone is so impressed. <laughs> Alright, let's go. Alright, where are you going? Northwest. Uh, I think you probably need to go see Colin first, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> so you make it your way to this log, uh, cabin lodge, and walk inside, and you're going to see Colin there drinking wine out of a goblet. As you walk in, the, the sunlight comes inside, and you see him wince from it and cover his eyes and says, Come on, come on, get it, get in, close that door. So uh, Nudas walks in quickly. And shuts the door. Slowly. Nah, not the place. Come on, speed. Uh, and he says, thank you. And you can see him squint real hard. Um, you get the impression that uh, he has hangover. He says, 
feel like I gotta pelt my mouth and squirrels run around inside my head. I <sighs> celebrated uh, way too much in the post game last night. Man's gotta do what a man's gotta do. And what'd you all get into? I saw you disappear. I hope you didn't run in crazy, did you? Ah, uh, we just went to bed. We got a long trip ahead of us. Yeah, I'm wishing I had now. Well, I got your letter finished up. You'll see him roll up a piece of parchment, and he's going to put it into this uh, leather cylinder uh, with a cap on the end, and he seals it up, and he's going to throw it to you. The loon dice will try to catch it. Yeah, I mean, you catch it. There's no problem. Aw. That's the best I can do. I don't know if it'll help you out or not, but, you know, I'm, promise is a promise. Uh, I wish you that you and your lady the best and uh, safe travels up there at the Fay Gate. But like I said, I don't think you're going to have much luck. And if I could talk it out to you, talk it out of you, why don't you just stay here or maybe settle down somewhere else around here? I'm, I'm sure people wouldn't look too poorly on you for you not going through your adulthood ritual. I mean, with things being the way they is now, or maybe just wait till things calm down. But. You know, I hate to see you go up there and get turned in porcupine by them uh, high elves. I ain't fixing to let them decide what I'm going to do. So I am going to do whatever I feel like doing. Spoken true, I guess. Well, like I said before, it's your life. You can do what you want with it. I'd just be remiss if I didn't warn you. I thank you for that. We'll be on our way. All right, take care. There to die some nodding head out the door. All right, so we head over to our wagon and prep it for departure. It takes you maybe about 20 minutes or so to get all your gear in there and tied down and your horse is ready to go. And you are ready to head out of town. Excellent. We will say goodbye to any elves who are in earshot and then just go. You know, there's one or two kids that wave to you, but for the most part, um, people are uh, either not paying attention or actively ignoring you because you beat the Lions. You headed down to town? Yep. You make it back past the tavern, and you are going to see um, that same flowing blonde hair, now like greasy and like unkempt of an elf come staggering out from behind the uh, the howling cabbage here and uh, he's still wearing his lull and lion uniform from last night and he is stinking drunk. Uh, you recognize this is Tom Crady and uh, the rest of the team and uh, he says I've been waiting for you to come out all night <clears throat> and he's going to puke and then um, wipe his mouth and then immediately start taking another drink out of this wineskin that he's got. Yeah, you leaving? Get on out of town here, you, you cheaters. And the rest of the guys are like, yeah, cheaters, get out of here. We ought to kick your ass. Oh, uh, yes, good game team too. Uh, bye. Crady's going to throw his wineskin at you. <laughs> Can he catch it? Uh, that's an 18. So this, he's stumbling Ow. around. <laughs> and uh, he, for a second, gains some clarity and some his balance and throws this thing right at you. Can, can Talia try to throw a dagger at it and knock it out of the air? Um, I'll let you have a reaction to that. It's going to be a high uh, DC as it's moving through the air and you weren't ready. Uh, what roll do I attack. roll? 19? So you throw this and uh, this uh, dagger, and you're going to hit it enough to deflect it out of the way, but wine is going to go spraying across uh, the back of Juliet's horse and uh, Alunidas. Uh, so Talia's going to catch the knife as it comes back and, and just say, it's not cheating if it's skill. Oh, nice. You saying I ain't got skill, little girl? I'm saying you use your size as if it is your skill, which it's not. Holding a little girl down and beating the pulp out of her and st 
still failing to keep the ball away from her. That's that's fairly unskillful, sir. Why, why, why you sass mouth little? And he is going to come um, running at you. This will end well. And uh, he's going to get about probably ten feet away, and he is going to trip and hit his head and just pass out. Smooth. Oh, it did it. I was just going to look at him and, and shake her head and say, moron. The rest of the team's going to go over and they're going to pick him up and you're going to see them uh, carry him back uh, behind the Howling Cabbage Inn. That was the best outcome he could have hoped for. It's very true. So at this point, there's a little bit of a gathering um, that's happening because of this scene. You know, people are just shaking their heads, and then after the team carries off Tom Crady, you see the crowd disperse. We should uh, we should get out of here before the uh, town decides that I disrespected their hero too much. That makes sense. Yes. Now I smell like ugh, whatever was in that drink. It smells like strong wine. Juliet is going to use prestidigitation to clean off her clothes, but she can't clean herself with that, so oh well. I thought it just got on your horse. No, oh, is it just on the horse? Yes, yeah, so got, some of it got on Lunados. Yep. <laughs> Lunados is not too happy about it. He doesn't have prestidigitation. Sorry, Luno. It wasn't you, it was him. So, uh, what are you doing now? Are you leaving town? We're going. All right, so currently you are in Lowen. Which direction are you headed? Oh, did you get let's, did you get a map? We did get that little map on a napkin. Oh, that's right. Okay. So, um napkin. From from the napkin, um from what you can tell, <laughs> um the directions that he's given you is up here is Fadel. And this area right here with the uh, waterfall is the Fey Gate. We don't actually need to go to the Fey Gate. We just need to get to Fey Dale. All right. So are you trying to stick to the roads or are you going to try to cut through the woods? That is an excellent question. What do you all think? I think sticking to the woods would be less likely to encounter people, but a harder travel and probably wild animals. I mean, I'd rather encounter animals than people with bows. Makes sense. Agreed. Except this is the elven country, so there's magic animals. Cool, maybe we can keep one. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to train a manicure? How to train your manicure? Disney's Pixar. Actually, I have been, ever since I saw one, I've been trying to figure out how I can tame a displacer beast. <laughs> Oh yeah, they're adorable. They look like Don't panthers, they have those but with tentacles. tentacles coming out their back. Yeah, it's like a nine tails kitty cat. <laughs> All right, so what are we doing? I guess we're taking the woods. All right, so if you cut straight across from Lowen to Fadell, you think by the distance it would take you maybe two days to get there. But with the terrain through these woods, you don't know how thick it is. Um, but when you reach the outskirts of it, um, you think uh, it'll probably double your trip at the very least because of how thick the woods are. I'm okay with that. If it gets us there safely, actually, no, because we, we should go faster. Um, because we don't know how long it's going to take for our reputation to get up here and uh, we've already made quite the mess and impression all over the place from what you gathered from Colin here and Lolan they haven't gotten much news here so you don't think yet. word of you would have spread here you didn't see like any reward posters hanging out for you like you did in some of uh, the other towns Yep. but that's not to say that it hasn't reached Fado because Fadel is a, a much more traveled trade route in a bigger city. That is very true. All right, so um, you're headed out for Fadel. How hard are you going to push? Seven. 
A seven out of a ten. Oh. Uh, Is this like basically like how many hours a day are you going to travel, and how hard are you going to try to push your your horses to get through these woods? I don't think we need to push them too hard. Stares awkwardly in dagger. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and that's the other consideration, too. It's like, okay, how long is, uh, do you, you not feed this dagger? Because so far you haven't seen anything out in these woods. And we'll say you've already traveled for maybe a day and a half and you haven't really seen anything. You've seen some, you know, rabbits and maybe some deer running around, but, um, you've been basically no bandits or anyone trying to stop you so far. Well, if the bandits aren't going to come to us, we got to go to the bandits. All right, so do you want to try to hunt down some bandits in these woods? Um, Alunas, do you have any tracking skills? I do not. I I mean, I have a plus three to survival, plus one to uh, the, the, the nature. So, no. I am in the same assortment. Does anybody have any... Uh, well, I just want to put it out there. If we get into a fight with anybody, make sure that you knock them unconscious. Don't try and kill. So that way I can help feed the dagger. And I don't uh, keep on paying the costs. And I'll raise up my right hand. That makes sense. As you, uh, that say, I'll try to remember that. As you say that and raise up your right hand now that it's been like a day and a half later, you've noticed that that, uh, that black veining from your palm has probably crept up about another inch. That's not good. I'd also like to say how (laughs) funny it is that everyone now is totally comfortable with uh, casual murder to feed this dagger. All right, so um, you are on your second day, and by the time um, you're on your second day, you're about right in here. Um, you're going to travel through that day and then, um, you settle down for the night. And, uh, also Juliet, is there anything that you want to do as you're traveling through here? Like at night, like trying to write spells or, uh, yes. If I have the opportunity, I have three more spells. I would like to write in or try. All right. So, um, we'll say, um, go ahead and do, try to, um, you okay. want to try to locate object again. Uh, no. Once I fail, uh, the, the ink and the spell is are wasted. Okay. It's a sacrifice that I am willing to make. Uh, so I'm going to do... The first spell is going to be Crown of Madness, and the second is going to be Enlarge Reduce. Okay. So go ahead and do Crown of Madness. Arcane uh, check. It's going to be a 13. Um, so it, it's going to take you the, um, the majority of one night as you're lying by the fire and you actually don't get as much rest because uh, you're staying up and before you know it, it's your watch. You're just having some trouble with some of the scripts here, but you're able to get the the spell copied. Okay. Uh, And the second one, enlarge, reduce. That is going to be a 16 this time. Uh, Yeah, you don't have any problem copying that one. Fantastic. That's a pretty handy spell to have. Uh, Yeah. Pass through one night, two nights, and towards the end of that second night, everyone is making camp when you start to hear some loud rustling in the woods. Give me a perception check, everybody. Nine. Eleven. Eight. So, Alexander, you would hear it coming from the western, northwestern part of your camp, and you start peering out into the woods. And the uh, the light is starting to, to get low. The light's coming through the trees and then just hits this portion of the forest where you're looking just right. And you see these glowing yellow eyes. And then some crashing through these woods as it starts running towards you. And I think that's probably a pretty good place to end it. Of course it is. Light's getting low, getting low. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Dungeons & Debacles podcast. If I could ask a halfling-sized favor, give us a 5-star rating and review on iTunes. It's the best way to support us. New episodes come out every Monday, so make sure to check your podcast app. Do you have an idea to make the podcast better? 
tell us about it on Twitter or Facebook. You can also check out our website to see all the maps, lore, and characters at DungeonsAndDebaclesPodcast.com. And now a word from our fantasy sponsor. Am I get you what they owe. Has a magical pestilence destroyed your farm and family through no fault of your own? I'm Hamish the Hammer, and I can get you the gold you deserve. A wizard unleashed a spell that blotted my crops and my family starved to death. The hammer got me the gold to rebuild my life. I have a new wife, a milk cow, and even a pig. Thank you, Hamish. Going to the town guard or petitioning the leader of your village takes too long when you need gold now. My professional team of negotiators gets to the root of the problem and persuades them to do the right thing. I don't get paid unless you do. Send a raven with a message about your problem to Luskane, care of Hamish the Hammer, for a free consultation. The Hammer gets you what they owe. I'm a little afraid of the encounter now. Like, what are we encountering? Displacer beasts? Um, well, you did mention that there are magical beasts out in these woods, which there are. I, and, uh, I mean, I if it's a displacer a per- beast. I rolled a uh, percentile dice on each one of those days that you went through. If it's a displacer beast, can I at least get the chance to tame it and keep it as a pet? <laughs> what makes you think it's a displacer beast? I don't know, because but if it is it. one. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll I'll have a table of 100 monsters on this that would be out in these woods, and I'll roll a percentile dice. And if it lands on a displacer, then that's what will happen. No guarantees you'll be able to train it. Try to tame it no matter what it is, Talia. But I have the chance of taming it. That's that's the important... Well, that depends on if he lets you roll for it. Oh, uh, one can only hope. I know it's a long shot, but ever since I saw one, I was like, I want that uh, as a pet. They for, are pretty forever. cool. Or, instead of taming it, we can sacrifice it to the dagger. Or... I mean, if, if I ran into Displacer Beast, I would kill it and skin it and then make a cloak out of it so you'd have a cloak of displacement. Or I could have an adorable... Uh, you know what? I, I think that after level 7, Talia might just take a level in Ranger. Because at this point, she's just trying to collect pets, I think. Unintentionally. <laughs> Gotta catch them all. Like, she's a rogue, so <laughs> she's supposed to have a rodent of some kind. Or a uh, street urchin is her background. So she's supposed to have a rodent. But I'm not going to force a new one, which would because that's ridiculous. We'll call him Templeton. <laughs> right. <laughs> I was thinking Feifel, but yeah, Templeton. Or Willard. I thought Willard was the guy who had the rats. He was, but it's the association. (laughs) The music you heard on this episode was Heroic Age, Folk Round, Minstrel Guild, At Rest, Giant Worm, Teller of the Tales, Arcane, and Long Road Ahead by Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com. Licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0 License. CreativeCommons.org slash licenses slash buy slash 3.0.